Joining me today is our product designer, Jose Hernandez. Today we're going to show the future of video made possible by Twitter on Apple TV. Let's jump in and watch Thursday Night Football. Fans love watching their favorite live sports on the largest screen in the house, sending millions of tweets a day from their iPhones and iPads. With a simple swipe on the incredible Siri remote, we can bring that conversation in to make viewing more entertaining with tweets from athletes and more insightful with stats from journalists. Oh, it looks like the bears have recovered in the end zone. Now, the Twitter timeline comes alive to show immediate reactions. That pretty much sums up my fantasy team this year. Tweets also include video replays and periscopes from different vantage points. I have to say, this is a great way to watch TV. With that touchdown, I think the Bears might be able to win this on defense alone. At critical moments in the game like this, audience polls let Jose weigh in on the situation. Once he's voted, live results show up instantly. Now, Jose sees some candor that he wants to respond to. Apple TV makes it easy for him to send that tweet to his iPhone so he can join the conversation. Let's see how he responds. <laughs> Strong choice. In addition to NFL Thursday Night Football, Twitter is very excited to offer free premium sports content from the NHL and NBA, news from Bloomberg, and election night coverage from BuzzFeed. We're merging live video, social, sports and news in an interactive format not possible before Twitter on Apple TV. It's what's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. This is a great example of the power of Apple TV and how apps are changing the way that we enjoy television. Now, in fact, so we now have so many great apps, and each of these apps has an incredible amount of amazing content. With Siri and Universal Search, we've made it easy to search across your apps. But Universal Search was just the beginning for us. We want to do even more to make this experience even better. We want Apple TV to be the one place to access all of your television. A unified TV experience. That's one place to access all of your TV shows and movies. One place to discover great new content to watch. So today, we're announcing a new app, and we simply call it TV. It will completely change how you watch TV with your Apple TV as well as your iPhone and iPad. But rather than talk about it, we'd just like to show you. And to do that, I'd like to bring up Jen Folds, a senior designer on Apple TV, to show you all about it. Jen? TV app is the first place I go when I turn on my Apple TV. It brings the shows and movies from all my video apps all into one place. So I start off in Watch Now, where the focus is on Up Next. It has all the TV shows and movies that I'm currently watching from across all of my apps. You can see what's up next along the bottom and get a little more context for each in the top right. So for example, I bought Sing Street on iTunes but didn't finish watching. And as you can see, Up Next lets me continue from where I left off. For shows that I'm binging on, like Homeland on Showtime, the next episode is right here, ready for me to start. And for currently airing shows that I'm watching, CBS, Up Next shows me the newest episode once it's available. It's so great to finally have one place to go for everything I'm watching. But it doesn't end there. When I want to discover something new, I just swipe down. 
Our editors have selected the absolute best content and showcase it in what to watch and the TV and movie spotlights. And since all of this is content from my apps, it means I can just play everything I see here. I can choose to browse by category or get a look even further into the catalog available to me through these hand curated collections. So if you're one that hasn't seen Game of Thrones yet, now's a great time to start. And with Watch Now, I just click play. I'm taken straight to HBO Now and the show starts. So since I'm watching in HBO Now, pressing menu takes me to the show details from within the app. And I can get back to TV just by pressing the TV button. As you can see, Game of Thrones was automatically added to the front of Up Next, so it's easy for me to pick up later. So that's Watch Now. It's the best place for me to continue watching and browse new TV shows and movies across my apps. Now moving over to the library view, I have all of my iTunes purchases and rentals all in one place. And now you get a sneak peek at some of my guilty pleasures like The Real Housewives. True story. When I'm in the mood for something completely new, I head over to the store, where I can explore great new content to add to watch now. There's new movies available from iTunes, and all of these apps that I can just sign up to access. So when I find one that I like, I can just click to install. In just a few seconds, the app installs on my Apple TV, and it will automatically download to all of my other devices, so I can watch wherever I want. So here within STARS, I can easily sign up, or if I'm already authenticated using Apple's new single sign-on feature, I'll instantly get access to all the great content they have right here in the app. And when I go back to TV, I can see that Watch Now has automatically been updated as well to include the best of STARS, like Power and Star Wars The Force Awakens. And the TV app doesn't just work on my Apple TV. It's on my iPhone and iPad as well, which is great for when I'm on the road or just relaxing in my backyard. So let's switch to my iPad. So here's the new TV app. It has everything that was in the previous videos app right here in my library. And we've added all the same features I just showed on Apple TV, including Watch Now. So in Up Next, you can see that Game of Thrones episode we just played, as well as all my other shows and movies. And we have all that same great curated content as well. Now, of course, Siri works great with the TV app. For shows that I'm watching, I can just say, play Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay, here's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Three, two, five minutes late. Yikes! But I had to stop and get some wine. Hello, good sir. I'd like your finest bottle of wine, please. That will be $1,600. Great. I'd like your eight-dollarest bottle of wine, please. It's from the finest vineyard in Arkansas. Yeah. So Siri knows exactly which episode I was on and picked up right where I left off. Let's switch back to my Apple TV. So once again, you can see that Up Next was automatically updated with that episode we just played on my iPad. So that's the new TV app. It brings the best shows and movies from all my video apps all into one place. And it works across Apple TV, iPhone, and iPad. It's going to completely change how we watch television. Now, I'd like to talk about another important category, and that's live. Apple TV has so many amazing apps that are great for tuning into live news and sports. And today, Siri is making it easier than ever to watch the live content that you want. So now I can say things like, watch CBS News. Writing two masterpieces. By Siri tunes in straight to what's live on CBS. Now since I'm watching in the app, I can get more news just by swiping up. And choose a different story just by clicking. So that's great when I know what channel I want. 
But what about when I just want to watch my favorite sport? So let's say it's Saturday, and you know what that means, college football day. All I need to do is tell Siri to turn on the game. Watch the Louisville game. Siri knows which app has the game and takes me straight to the action. Finley looking at a blitz. Throws one over the middle and throws another interception. Wow. Well, since this game looks like a total runaway, let's use Siri to find out what other football games are on now. Siri shows me all of today's schedules and scores, and even which other games I can watch live. Well, I know a certain CEO and Auburn alum that probably wants to tune in, so let's take a look. Look at Cam Martin. Here he goes. I mean, this is just getting silly in the box score right now. Siri makes it so easy to catch all the exciting moments. So with Siri Live TuneIn and the unified experience of the new TV app, Apple TV is the best place to watch TV shows, movies, sports, and more. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. I'm very excited about the new TV app for Apple TV, as well as for iPhone and iPad. So now there is a unified TV experience. That's one place to discover and enjoy your t favorite TV shows and movies across all of your devices. Now, we're going to make the TV app available for free with a software update for tvOS and iOS beginning in the United States by the end of this year. Apple TV iPhone and iPad have become the primary ways that many of us enjoy watching television. And now with the TV app, there's really no reason to watch TV anywhere else. So that's Apple TV and the new TV app. <laughs> Next thing we'd like to talk about is something dear to all of us at Apple, and that is the Mac. The Mac is more than a product to us. It's a testament to everything we do and everything we create at Apple. The Mac is so incredibly important to us. But it's not just important to us, it's important to the world. It's had a profound impact in education, design, business, the arts, the sciences, and, and so many areas. The world's creative forces use the Mac to push the world forward. We continue to push the Mac experience forward with Mac OS. And this year, we launched the best version yet, Mac OS Sierra. It brought a lot of powerful new features to the Mac, such as iCloud Drive, which makes all the files on the desktop or in the documents folder of one Mac available to any other Mac, as well as your iPhones and iPads. And Universal Clipboard, letting you copy content from your iPhone or iPad in your Mac and paste it in your Mac. And hundreds of thousands of websites now are offering their customers Apple Pay. So you can shop with your Mac and then just with a click and a tap, complete your purchase. Siri is now available on all Apple platforms, including the Mac. And on top of the capabilities you've grown to love with Siri, we've designed some specific ones just for the Mac. For instance, you can do detailed file searches just by asking Siri. This is an incredible productivity savings. We're really excited about all the things you can do with Mac OS Sierra. The Mac experience just keeps getting better and better. Now, 
you may not realize it, but this week happens to be a huge week in the history of the Mac and in the history of Apple. This week marks the 25th anniversary of our first notebook. It was on October 25th of 1991 that Apple unveiled the first PowerMac. Now, the PowerBook actually defined the modern notebook for its time, changing the category and changing Apple forever. This was the first portable that featured the Keyboard 4 design so you could rest your palms when you were typing. It had a pointing device integrated right into the palm rounds. Now, all of us take this for granted today, but this is where it all started. It was also the first laptop with an active matrix display. Now, we didn't stop here. Every generation of Mac notebooks had some major innovation that wound up pushing the industry forward the first trackpad, the first notebook with built-in Wi-Fi, the first aluminum unibody design, the first with all flash storage, and the first with all-day battery life, and the first retina display in a notebook. For 25 years, we've been defining and redefining what a notebook is what a notebook can do. And today, we're going to do it again. Let me show it to you. the new MacBook Pro, and it is absolutely incredible. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. This is so exciting. A new generation MacBook Pro, and it is seriously cool. It has a whole new design made of aluminum. It is metal on all sides. It is incredibly extreme. And this kind of design is only possible with a unique, unique collaboration between our hardware engineering, our operations, and our industrial design team working together to solve problems others haven't even tried to tackle. It is the new gold standard in notebook computers. And it enables innovations not possible before. It comes in a 13 inch and 15 inch sizes, and silver and space gray. And it is simply the thinnest and lightest MacBook Pro we have ever made. So let's dive into a few of the details. First, let's look at the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Here's the previous generation, absolutely the leader in its field in performance and thin and light. But here's the new 13 inch MacBook Pro on the right. Yes, it is just 14.9 millimeters thin. That's 17% thinner than the previous generation. And it's smaller, too. 23% smaller in volume, almost a quarter less 
That's a huge difference. And it weighs less too. It weighs just three pounds, almost a half a pound less than the previous version. Let's turn it around so you can see the all metal design on all sides. It is an absolutely stunningly beautiful notebook. Now let's look at the 15 inch notebook. Again, the previous 15 inch MacBook Pro, the standard, the best professional notebook that had ever been made until today. Here's the new 15 inch Pro next to it. 15.5 millimeters thin. That's 14% thinner. And it is smaller as well, 20% smaller in volume than the previous one, one fifth less. It's a huge engineering feat. And it weighs just four pounds, again, a half a pound less. Four pounds for a high performance professional 15 inch notebook. That's just unheard of. But what's really impressive is when customers open it up for the first time and look inside because everything is all new. a new trackpad, a force touch trackpad. It is twice as big as the trackpad in the previous generation. A lot more room for your gestures. Now, this is only possible because of the force touch technology. In order to have a great click feel, if it was a mechanical click mechanism, it would not be possible. This is really state of the art and the best trackpad we've ever made. The keyboard is all new as well. It uses the butterfly switch mechanism that we pioneered in our 12 inch MacBook. But now we've applied it to a professional notebook. And in this case, there's a new switch mechanism, second generation butterfly. It's more responsive. It gives an even greater sense of keyboard travel as you press on it. It is a great keyboard. I could talk all day about it, but I think you're probably looking at that area just above it. <laughs> what our team has done in this area where function keys used to exist is remarkable. But before we get into that, I do think it's worth a moment for a requiem for the function key. Many of you probably experienced it for the first time, as some of us did, back with something like this. This is an IBM 3270 mainframe terminal from 1971. That's when many of us first experienced this great new technology called the function key. And it allowed us to do operations on a mainframe terminal. Well, those function keys migrated to our desktops, to our notebooks. Over 45 years we've been using function keys. Well, actually for the last who knows how many years, we really haven't been using them anymore. Because when's the last time you've had a 3270 mainframe terminal emulation session? It's been a while, right? So we've mapped other functions onto these keys. We've put volume and brightness on them. But this is crazy, keeping 45-year-old technology around and mapping other things to them. Our, our design team has, has taken on the challenge to move forward and say, what if we get rid of them? What could we do in their place? What technology could we provide that actually enhances the experience that we all have with our notebooks all day long? What they've done is truly remarkable. This is what it looks like. It's a retina display. It is multi-touch. It responds to your gestures and your taps. It makes things incredibly easy to use. Call it touch mode. Now, touch bar can do so many things to help us as we use a MacBook Pro. First, it replaces the standard system functions we're used to. So if you want to set the brightness or the volume, it's easier than ever before, just a slide or tap. But it goes way beyond that. The touch bar adapts to whatever software you're using. So for example, in this case, we're in Safari, and now the touch bar is showing us buttons for our favorite websites. If you want to go to a website, you can just slide along and tap it, and it takes you to that website. Once you're there, it changes again. Now it shows you a search field, a back button, and add another uh, tab in your view. Just the tools you need for where you are. And it goes beyond just being application specific. The touch bar can provide new surfaces for tools that we use all the time. So for example, here I am in photos and I want to straighten that photo. I have a new interface right there on touch bar for straightening the photo. And my hands are right down on the keyboard where I want them in a notebook. It's a perfect experience. 
And since it's near the keyboard, it's also really helpful when you're typing. So as you're typing, the touch bar can show you quick type suggestions. You can just tap on and type even faster. It is incredibly useful and intuitive and really fun to use. Well, next to touch bar is another technology, Touch ID. We're bringing Touch ID to the Mac for the very first time. So now you can log into your Mac with your fingerprint. And it's integrated right where it belongs, in with the power button. It's supported by a second generation Touch ID sensor, so it's really fast. It's covered with a sapphire crystal, so it feels great. And it's supported by a brand new chip, the Apple T1 chip. And this chip includes secure enclave. So now you can do Apple Pay purchases with your finger right on your MacBook Pro. So this is the touch bar and touch ID. And to show it to you working live for the very first time, I'm really excited to bring up Craig Federighi. Craig? Oh, good morning. Thank you, Phil. Uh, it's a rare privilege to be able to be the first to show you the amazing new MacBook Pro and touch bar uh, live in action. And to do that, I'm going to have to do a grand reveal here. So it's my, my David Copperfield moment. All right. Here it is, the new MacBook Pro. Well, getting started on your Mac has never been easier. I can, with, we've now brought Touch ID to the Mac. So now I can just take my finger, rest it on the Touch ID sensor, and I'm instantly inside my Mac. Now I want to focus our attention here on the amazing new Touch Bar. The first thing is system control. So you'll be relieved to see they're all still here. So you can access your brightness, uh, your playback controls, your audio, and for the first time ever, Siri has a dedicated key right on the Mac keyboard. It's really great. Now, Phil's touching eulogy for the function keys may have been a bit premature. I know some of you had some 3270 emulation uh, sessions planned for this afternoon, and good news, they can carry on, because if you hold down the function key, you notice they come right back and available to you right here. <laughs> it's a huge relief. Now, normally you're going to run with your system controls tucked away in control strip. What's really great is control, control strip still makes it really easy to do everything you want to do with your system controls. Because you have multi-touch, you can tap and slide right here to do things like adjusting your volume and your brightness. But you'll notice here in the middle is an area for, sys, for contextual controls for the apps that you run. Let me show you those inside of Mail. So here we are in Mail. And you notice that the bar has been transformed. So now I have controls for things like uh, adjusting, uh, uh, composing a message, replying, even flagging, all right here. And as I work my way through my messages, you'll notice another button here. This one actually provides predictions for where I might want to file my messages based on my previous filing habits. So I can just send this one off with a tap. It's that easy. Now, because Touch Bar is part of the keyboard, it's great for typing. I can reply to this message, and you notice I'm presented with quick type options. And quick type has learned how I like to communicate. So I can just respond to this one with, I'm totally stoked, right there. And when it comes to formatting my text, Touch Bar has me covered as well. You see, it presents formatting controls. So for instance, I can make the text bold, change its color. It's all that easy. And when I want to address a message, I'll just click in the CC field here. You see it even predicts who I might want to add to this message. I can do it just like this, and with a tap on the send button, send this message on its way. Now, of course, what I've done here in terms of typing English text has become totally passe. It's all about emoji now. So let me bring up messages. And you'll see what happens as I type pumpkins here on the bar. Quick type suggests a replacement emoji that I can add with just a tap. But Touch Bar even provides a great interface for browsing all of my emoji. I can slide through them just like this or even browse them by category. It's super easy. Just go back to my frequently used and I can finish composing my response just like this. Now sometimes you get a message from a friend and you realize you want to give them that necessary emotional uh, ballast with a quick uh, response, you can give them a, a thumbs up or maybe even a heart to 
give them that personal affirmation they need to make it through the day. It's really great. You can do that all right on your touch bar. Now, touch bar is really fantastic for navigation in your apps. You see, here I've opened a Safari window that has multiple tabs, and touch bar is transformed with a control for moving between my tabs. I get previews here. I can just tap and move through my tabs like this, or even slide and get a preview. And when I want to open a new tab, well, that's easy too. I can tap on the plus button, and you see right here, I have all my favorites. I'm just going to tap into an item I've had my eye on here on Etsy. And you see, now that Etsy is bringing Apple Pay to their checkout page, well, I can actually buy this impulse purchase here with just a tap. I can securely authorize the payment with Touch ID. It's that easy. And soon I will be feeling the amazing power of pyramids and copper together. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. All right. Let's move on to photos because the touch bar is really great in photos. Now I can take photos here full screen. This is obviously not my personal photo library, but I'm able to enjoy this photo in full screen on my main display because touch bar takes over all of the navigation. So I have this strip of all my photos. I can easily swipe between them or flick my way to the end of my library. It's super easy to identify a particular photo like this one. And you notice this is a video. So I have playback controls right on touch bar. And if you notice, touch bar also has a scrubbing control with a preview of my video. So I can just scrub the video forward, backward. It's a really great use of multi-touch. Now, touch bar is also great for making quick edits. So if I go to a photo like this that maybe I want to rotate, you notice there's a control on touch bar to do that. I can do it with just a tap. And I can do more powerful edits as well. For instance, I might want to make some adjustments on this one. I can use my leveling control. Let's see, I can level just like this. It's really easy. I can perform adjustments to lighting, for instance. Tap into my light slider and go darker or lighter. I can also apply effects and filters. You see those filters are actually previewed right here on the touch bar. So I can just tap through, look at different effects, pick one that I like. There's even a button to preview the before and after. So I think those are a great set of edits right there. So Touch Bar obviously has some amazing out-of-the-box controls to accelerate everything you do on your Mac. But pros really like to customize their tools to match their personal workflows. And here, Touch Bar really shines. I'm going to show you something in Finder. So here in Finder, when I select a file, we see we have a bunch of useful controls, like I can quick look and share and even tag my files right from the touch bar. But maybe I want to do something different. Well, now I can customize my touch bar. And you see I get this palette of all of the capabilities available to me. Let's say I like to connect often to servers where I store my big assets. Well, now I can drag this button. And I want you to watch what happens as I drag it to the bottom of my main display. It drops right through into the touch bar where I can position it down there. It's incredibly easy to customize the system. Now, you can customize your control strip and even your set of primary system controls. So I could add a do not disturb button or this cool new screenshot control. Just drag it down, place it where I want it, and just like that, I've customized my touch bar. Now, for my grand finale, I want to pull full circle, and that's back to Touch ID. And so for this final demonstration, I'd like to bring Phil Schiller to the stage. Now, just someone random from the audience. Some random individual chosen from the audience. It turns out, I'm going to reveal a little secret, Phil and I actually share this machine. And so Phil has actually enrolled his finger in Touch ID. And when Phil places his finger on the sensor, it actually recognizes him. And with a click, he can fast user switch right into his account. To get his work done. Fantastic finger work, Phil. So that is a quick demonstration of the new MacBook Pro and its amazing touch bar. I hope you love it. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. The one and only Craig Federici, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Craig showed you so many great uses of touch bar on the MacBook Pro, and it doesn't stop there. It's integrated throughout the system and throughout the applications we all love. So now it's so much easier to search for things in Maps with Touch Bar. 
It's so easy to answer a FaceTime call right from the touch bar. It's great for zooming between weeks in your calendar. It controls your music playback when you're in iTunes. There's complete support across all of the iWork applications, so it's built into pages, keynote, and numbers. It's awesome when you're editing videos in iMovie. And it's great for controlling the musical instruments you play in GarageBand. We've even built in touch bar support into the ever popular terminal. <laughs> and for developers, they're going to love the support in touch bar inside Xcode, not only for using Xcode, but creating touch bar in their own applications. So there are so many great uses of the touch bar. It changes the experience we have on our Mac, and it's really wonderful. So now let's turn to the display. The display in the new MacBook Pro is simply the best display we've ever made on a Mac. Compared to the previous 15-inch MacBook Pro, it is 67% brighter. It has a 67% greater contrast ratio. It displays wide color with a 25% greater color gamut. All this in a display that consumes less power and is as thin as a 12-inch MacBook display. It's amazing. Now let's flip it over and let's look inside because the engineering innovation is just as remarkable on the inside of the new MacBook Pro. So every 15-inch MacBook Pro includes, oops, I'm sorry, every MacBook Pro is the most powerful MacBook Pro we've ever made. There you go. So inside every 15-inch MacBook Pro is an Intel Core i7, sixth generation quad-core chip it's, it's paired with faster 2133 megahertz memory. It is a really fast system. It has faster graphics as well. Radeon Pro Graphics. This is the AMD Polaris architecture. Up to 4 gigs of video memory. And it delivers graphics power that's now 2.3 times faster than the previous generation 15-inch MacBook Pro. And the storage is faster too. Now up to 3.1 gigabyte per second. You can figure it with twice as much, up to two terabytes, and it's 50% faster as well. Now, all this performance of faster CPU, faster graphics, faster memory, faster storage, in a device that's thinner, took creating a whole new thermal architecture. The team's done an amazing job at this. New thinner heat pipes, new innovative fan blades, and allow us to run the system cooler and quieter as well. The one thing that's not quieter is the speakers. The speakers fit into a smaller space, but they put out more volume, and it sounds better, too. It's got twice the dynamic range of audio. Now, this is a system that just flies, and it is incredible at the apps you use. Every day, you're going to feel the performance increases. So here's some examples of the performance difference between the new 15-inch MacBook Pro and the previous generation. The new MacBook Pro at 3D graphics, 130% faster. At gaming, 60% faster. Video editing, 57% faster. This is the kind of performance you feel. Everyday, real-world applications. So that's the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now let's look at the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It can be configured with dual-core 6th generation Intel i5 or i7 chips, also mated to 2133 megahertz system memory. It has faster Intel Iris graphics with 64 megs of ED RAM which provides up to two times the graphics performance of the previous generation. And it also has the faster flash storage. In this case, that now delivers twice the storage performance of the previous 13-inch MacBook Pro. And here's some examples of real-world application tests on it. The new 13-inch MacBook Pro is 103% faster at gaming than the previous generation, and 76% faster both at video editing and 3D graphics. Now, the system's much faster, and so is the I.O. It is the fastest, most versatile I.O. we've ever built into a MacBook Pro. Both the 13 and the 15-inch have four Thunderbolt 3 ports. That delivers an incredible 40 gigabit per second of bandwidth. It also supports USB 3.1 Gen 2, and of course, DisplayPort 1.2. Now, I know many of you know that Thunderbolt 3 uses the USB-C style connector. And that means that any one of the four ports can be a charging port. Plug it into whichever one you want, left side, right side, and that's your charging port. But it's so much more versatile than that. Each one of the ports can be power, can be Thunderbolt, 
can be USB, display port, video out with VGA or HDMI. So here's an example. Imagine you're a Final Cut Pro editor and you want to set up your MacBook Pro on your workstation at home at work. You want to build it out. Well, here's an example of what you can do with this incredible system. First, you want to add a display. And there are many displays you can add over DisplayPort, but this one is really special. This is a brand new LG display that we work together with them on to make it an amazing display for MacBook Pro customers. It's called the LG Ultrafine 5K display. It displays 5K resolution. It's wide color. It has built-in cameras, microphones, and speakers. It has three USB-C ports so you can plug peripherals directly into the display. And all of that connects to your MacBook Pro over a single Thunderbolt 3 cable. Not only that, it also charges the MacBook Pro over that same cable. It is the ultimate docking station. And it's so cool that why not add two, right? So you can have two 5K displays plus your built-in 15-inch retina display. That's almost 35 million pixels being driven by the graphics of the 15-inch MacBook Pro. With our two free Thunderbolt 3 ports, we're going to add not only one, but two RAID storage arrays. This is the new Promise Pegasus 3. It's configured with 24 terabytes per array here. So when you think about that storage, those displays, this level of expandability and performance is not possible on any other notebook. It's truly remarkable. We think Pro customers are going to love using the MacBook Pro. So we want to show you three examples of professional applications being used on the new MacBook Pro. The first one, Final Cut Pro. So to show you that, I'm very proud to bring up Susan Prescott, VP of Apps Product Marketing. Susan. Thank you. This is the new version of Final Cut Pro with a redesigned interface that looks great on the MacBook Pro. But I'm really excited to show you how it also takes advantage of the incredible graphics horsepower this machine's got, the beautiful wide color display that Phil talked about, and of course, the amazing new touch bar. So um, we're looking here at a short film featuring a botanical artist, a botanical artist who creates stunning flower sculptures. It was shot and edited in 4K and also in wide color. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look at the beginning of the piece. <laughs> edit in ways I never could before. Right here in the touch bar, I can see my entire timeline, and it shows me exactly where I am in my project. And that's cool, but even better, it's fully interactive. So I can drag to move through my project. I can just tap to jump to a specific section, and I can even zoom in to get a closer look. It's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to um, add a clip. When I select it in the browser in the top left, you may notice my touch bar automatically changes to show me relevant controls. So, for example, with just a tap, I can see the start and end of my time lapse to make sure it's what I want. I'm going to drag it into my timeline right here at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to add an audio clip to go with it. But I see here in my timeline that the audio clip runs a little bit longer than I'd like. Well, good news, the touch bar changed again to show me editing controls I need. It's so convenient that I can trim the end of the clip with just a tap in the touch bar. Pretty amazing. Thank you. It's great because I can also, with the touch bar, do things I do all the time, and it's even easier. Like, I can drag a slider to adjust my volume. If you look at the sound effect I just added, you can see the waveforms change. I'll get it just right there. And with a tap, I can add a fade in and a fade out. Pretty cool. So it's that simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done so far. shows me the same detailed overview of my timeline. But it's great because now I can navigate without ever leaving full screen. And with the power of the MacBook Pro, it's smooth and precise, even with really demanding 4K footage. 
of that part and go back again. All right? Um, let's go to the end where I'm going to add one last shot. It's this rather dramatic shot of the sculpture installed in a bamboo forest. There lies the answer to what botanical artists do. So, um, <laughs> some of you might have been wondering. Um, the touch bar is great at surfacing really useful features that can be hard to discover in a rich app like Final Cut Pro if you're just searching through menus. So, for example, Play Around shows me my edits in context. So if I tap on that now, I'll see a few seconds before and after the clip I just added. And it's a great way to watch the end of our film. <laughs> Final Cut Pro with the incredible performance of the MacBook Pro and, as I hope you saw, the deep integration with the touch bar. It's just great. Thanks so much. Thank you, Susan. Next, I want to show you a product that our customers count on and love so deeply. Photoshop. So many product customers use Photoshop across the projects on the MacBook Pro. And we're so happy to have with us Brady Evans, Experience Design Manager for Adobe Photoshop. Brady? Hi. Thank you. This new MacBook Pro and Photoshop are made for each other. This new addition of the touch bar really combines with the keyboard and this new giant trackpad to create this incredibly natural, expressive, and powerful new way of working with Photoshop. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. All right, I have up here on the screen this amazing image of a woman climbing Tersinos Cave in Greece. But what if this cave were not in Greece? What if it were here? Now to pull this off, I'm going to need to cut the cave out of Greece. And the tool for cutting things out in Photoshop is called Select and Mask. And normally it's in a menu or a sub-tool, but with the touch bar, it's right here at my fingertips. Now you can see the touch bar has changed to show me only the controls I need for this task. You can see how with my right hand, I'm mousing and selecting, and with my left hand, I'm adjusting the size of the brush. It's a really fun and natural way of working. Let me see if I can get her legs there. I'm gonna switch over to my refinement tool, and again, I can just resize while I work. Totally this two-hand way of working. It's really fun. I don't know if you guys can tell how much fun I'm having. Okay, all right, here we go. All right, let's see how I did. All right, that's not bad for 10 seconds. And that whole time, my two hands were really working in concert, and my eyes were up and on my image. It really makes a lot of sense. It's really a good way of working. OK, so this is great. This is definitely not Greece, but I'd like to see more drastic of a change. And adding content to an already open document can be a lot of mousing, but not with the touch bar. I'll just tap that, select the sunset, put that right there. And we'll move that under and see how that looks. All right, we're getting somewhere. I like this. But it's kind of yellow. And so I'd like to add more color. And to do that, I'm going to need to do some brushing. But first, I'm going to go into my touch bar. I'm going to choose my favorites. And then I'm going to add a new layer. And then I'm going to go into full screen. Now, full screen's amazing, as was just said. Uh, this is great. I have no panels, I have no menus, and I can 100% focus on my image. And thanks to the touch bar, I can get a lot more done in this view mode. So brushing is so important to so many workflows in Photoshop that we actually created a mode of the touch bar just for brush control. And here I can adjust the size of my brush, and I'll adjust how hard it is. And then I'll also adjust the flow of color through my brush. Now, speaking of color, you may know there are a lot of ways to choose color in Photoshop. But my new favorite by far is with the touch bar. This is absolutely awesome. Down here, I can keep my right hand dedicated on the touch bar, I mean on the trackpad, just for painting and not doing any pointing or picking. And my left hand is just kind of sliding across this touch bar. It's, it's really awesome. It almost feels like you're playing a musical instrument. It's kind of hard to stop, but I will stop. Okay, here we are. So this is looking pretty good. 
but my color isn't really blending very well with the layer below that. And to do that, to fix that, I'm going to switch back into the layer properties and I'm going to change the blend mode. Now, normally choosing a blend mode in Photoshop is a lot of clicking and trying and hoping and guessing. But with the touch bar, it can either be a scroll or a couple of taps. And this is really great, really opens us up to a lot of creative experimentation and leaves, leaves room for serendipity to happen. There, I kind of like this. This is pretty good. What do you guys think? <laughs> all right. Now, I've been doing all of this blending and cutting and painting completely fearlessly because I know that right here in my touch bar, I can scroll all the way back through my visual history and pick up anywhere along the way without losing any of my work. All right, and so that... <laughs> that is a preview of the new amazing synergy between Photoshop and the new MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and we hope to have it in the hands of our Photoshop users before the end of the year. Thank you. <laughs>
And this was all done right on the touch bar. It's a revolutionary tool for DJs. An update to DJ Pro is coming later this year, and we absolutely can wait for you to check it out. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kareem. I mean, he absolutely killed it on that. That song was so much fun to listen to. And I'm sure you got it that he was using both hands simultaneously on touch bar, because with its multi-touch input, it can support up to 10 inputs from your fingers. That's incredibly powerful. And there's so many great developers have started working on their apps for the new MacBook Pro, as well as touch bar, and they're doing remarkable things. For example, Microsoft is working to bring all of Microsoft Office to MacBook Pro with incredible touch bar support. So you're gonna see touch bar built in for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and even Skype for Business. They're doing a great job for Microsoft Office, complete support for MacBook Pro and Touch Bar. There's so many great tools, tools for graphic designers like Affinity Designer, supporting Touch Bar and MacBook Pro. For photographers like Pixelmator. For user interface designers with Sketch. High-end video editing and color grading with DaVinci Resolve and on and on. So many great professional applications are gonna take unique advantage of this incredible new experience. And that's what the MacBook Pro is. It's an entirely new experience. It's the gold standard in notebooks. It's a brand new design. We have a brief video to tell you a little bit more about it. The new MacBook Pro combines the fundamental qualities of an ultra portable device with uncompromising performance. With our new design, the product's overall volume has been reduced dramatically. This results in an extremely purposeful and powerful creative tool. It has the best retina display we've ever put in a notebook. A precisely designed LED spectrum projects through a metal oxide backplane. This yields a remarkably bright, high contrast picture with a wider color gamut. The larger force touch trackpad now provides an expansive area for a whole range of gestures. We've continued to refine our keyboard design to be more accurate and efficient. Dome switches beneath each key have been optimized for a more responsive feel. We're introducing a new way to interact with your notebook. A multi-touch bar provides a more intuitive, more immediate connection to your content. Commands that were once hidden are now visible, easily accessible, and also customizable. In each application, the most relevant controls are displayed dynamically allowing you to work with greater efficiency. This is also the first Mac with Touch ID. This seamless integration of hardware and software is truly unique to Apple. The speakers have also been completely redesigned to maximize air displacement and project high fidelity room filling sound. At its core, pro level processors integrated with high speed system memory and storage technologies make everything you do faster and more responsive. In a notebook this powerful, thermal management is critical. Thinner, variably spaced fan blades propel air quietly through a nearly solid structure. The new MacBook Pro achieves a design that optimizes both performance and portability. It marks a milestone in the evolution of the Mac. Apple Pro 
onto the latest version of Mac OS, Sierra. And Sierra takes full advantage of all that MacBook Pro has to offer. It's wide color display, it's touch bar, touch ID, and so much more. And the hardware and software working together in these super thin and light notebooks deliver all day battery life, up to 10 hours of battery life in both the 13 inch and the 15 inch. This is an incredible new generation of notebook. Now it might be fun to bring back in that first generation of notebook. Just for comparison, it is remarkable how much occur has occurred in just 25 years. <laughs> you may not remember that first PowerBook 170 had a 9.8 inch black and white active matrix 640 by 480 display. It's incredible now with a 15 inch retina display how far we have come. That PowerBook 170 had a state of the art 25 megahertz 68030 processor. And we've done the math. The new MacBook Pro is 6.8 million times faster. <laughs> or, thought of another way, a full year of compute time on that PowerBook 170 can be accomplished in less than five seconds on the MacBook Pro. It is, it is remarkable. We have advanced so far, including in how we make these. Our MacBook Pros are all made with arsenic-free glass, mercury-free displays, they're BFR-free, PVC-free, beryllium-free. They're all Energy Star 6.1, they're all E-Peak Gold, and of course made highly recyclable with their aluminum and glass. The team has set out to make simply the best notebooks ever for high-end professional customers, and they've absolutely hit it out of the park with the 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Pro. We think our Pro customers are going to love them. Now we do have other customers who choose other products in our line, like MacBook Air. They choose them for how thin and light they are. And we're going to continue to offer MacBook Air, the 13-inch in our line. But we challenged our team to take this new design, this 13-inch MacBook Pro, and could they make a model that would be really exciting for customers who would traditionally pick a MacBook Air. So we're making a model of the 13-inch MacBook Pro with traditional function keys and two Thunderbolt ports. We think that a lot of potential MacBook Air customers are going to be very excited about this product too. So how does it stack up? Well, you know the MacBook Air is beloved for its incredible thin and light design. Here it is. Well, let's bring the 13-inch MacBook Pro in next to it. Remember, we told you the MacBook Pro is 14.9 millimeters. That is thinner than the MacBook Air. It's actually 12% thinner. Now, I know what some of you think. You're saying, well, MacBook Air is a wedge shape, so it's probably smaller. No. <laughs> the MacBook Pro is 13% smaller in volume than the MacBook Air. What about weight? They both weigh the same three pounds. So MacBook Pro weighs the same as MacBook Air, and it's thinner and smaller. So let's look at them another way. Here, they are, here we are looking down on top of a MacBook Air. Let's slide on the 13-inch MacBook Pro on top of it. You can see how much smaller it is, why it has a lower volume. This is advanced design, incredible new techniques that make this 13-inch MacBook Pro so small, so light. Here they are back to back, MacBook Air on the left, MacBook Pro on the right. The MacBook Pro is smaller, but better in every way. It has a 13-inch retina display. It has a faster processor, faster memory, Faster storage, faster graphics, more advanced trackpad, more advanced keyboard. It is an incredible new product. So now you see we actually have three models of the new MacBook Pro. A 13-inch with traditional function keys, a 13-inch with touch bar, and a 15-inch with touch bar. Now there are many configurations of all of these, and you can CTO it with all the different things you want on it. But they each, of course, have an entry configuration. So I want to walk you through those now. The 13-inch MacBook Pro with function keys starts with a 2 gigahertz dual-core Intel Core i5. And it turbo speeds up to 3.1 gigahertz, so it's really fast. It has Intel Iris Graphics 550, 540. It has 8 gigs of faster system memory, 256 gigs of faster flash storage, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. The 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and Touch ID starts with a 2.9 gigahertz dual-core i5, it turbo speeds up to 3.3 gigahertz, 
and of course it has four Thunderbolt 3 ports. And the 15-inch MacBook Pro with its Touch Bar and Touch ID starts with a 2.6 gigahertz quad-core i7. It has a Radeon Pro 450 graphics and starts with 16 gigs of memory. The pricing for these three configs are $1499, $1799, and $2399. You can order them today. The MacBook Pro with Function Key starts shipping today. The two models with Touch Bar and Touch ID start shipping in two to three weeks, but of course you can get in your order today. So those are our MacBook Pros. Before we finish, I want to bring back one other product as you think about this line. Here are the three new MacBook Pros, and I've added on the left the 12-inch MacBook. Because that 12-inch MacBook started us on this path. It created many of the pioneering technologies that we've now adapted and evolved for the MacBook Pro. And it really makes sense together as you consider this line. 12-inch, 13-inch, 15-inch. Two pounds, three pounds, and four pounds. Starting at $12.99, going up to $23.99. From the most extreme portable notebook we've ever made to the most powerful notebook we've ever made. We think this is the most forward-looking advanced notebook line we have ever had. Thank you very much. Back to you, Tim. you. We think you are going to love this new MacBook Pro, and we can't wait to see all of the amazing things that people are going to do with it. We're so excited that we made an ad, and I would love to show it to you now. Pro lineup are the best notebooks we have ever made, and they're the most advanced notebooks ever made. They join other powerful products that we've announced this year. The best smartwatch, the Apple Watch Series 2, the best tablets, iPad Pro with some amazing new capabilities with the smart keyboard and the Apple Pencil. Of course, the best smartphone and the very best iPhones we've ever created the iPhone 7, and the iPhone 7 Plus. We couldn't be more excited about having our best product lineup ever heading into the holiday season. I'd like to thank everyone for coming and joining us this morning, and I'd particularly like to thank everyone at Apple who worked so incredibly hard on creating these products and building them. Thank you. We have an amazing hands-on area. And I'd like to invite everyone over there. It's just right down the hallway. And you can get your hands on the, the new MacBook Pros and see the new TV app in action. Thank you for coming.